I think you're still on mute. Uh, I think you're still on mute. I hope that doesn't affect my time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I want to begin by acknowledging I'm speaking to you from the traditional territory of the Wasonic Nation among the Coast Salish nations of Southern Vancouver Island and to them, Haishka Siam. I also want to start by congratulating my honorable colleague. I'm not sure if I should congratulate him. He was already a parliamentary secretary. He was parliamentary secretary for transport, but now he gets to debate me at Late Show because he's parliamentary secretary for environment and climate change. The question I raised to the Honourable Minister for Environment and Climate Change on December 8th related to Canada essentially exercising a loophole on our shipment of plastic waste to other countries. Uh, long ago, we e entered into the Basel Convention on Hazardous Waste, which prevents the export of hazardous waste to other countries except under certain conditions and with their prior informed consent. In our move to eliminate ocean plastics Canada and countries around the world work to have an amendment to the Basel Convention such that plastics on their way to be recycled in other countries could be treated as on different levels um, hazardous materials or acceptable for shipment to other countries and at a certain level annex to plastic waste require prior informed consent. Now the problem here when I put it to the Minister of Environment on December 8th is that Canada has entered into an agreement with the United States. The United States has never ratified the Basel Convention. It's not a party to the convention. And that has created a loophole where the U.S. could send um, non-conforming plastic waste to other countries. Now, the Minister of Environment answered my question by confirming that the United States is not a party to the Basel Convention. Yes, that was part of my question. And then he went on to say that the agreement between Canada and the United States dealt with waste vis-a-vis -vis our two countries, but doesn't deal with the U.S. exporting further to non-OECD countries. There is an increased level of concern about Canada exploiting this potential loophole. There are things we could do about it. We could ensure that we amend our agreement with the United States to ensure and specify that it deals exclusively with non-hazardous plastic waste as scheduled under Annex 9 of the Basel Convention. We could ratify the Basel ban ourselves to ensure that non-plastic waste, that no plastic waste is exported to non-OECD countries. And we could extend our manufactured plastic waste strategy under Schedule 17 of SEPA to actually enact our bans on single-use non-essential plastic. We could expand our integrated management plan and our approach for plastic products. There's much more we could do to ensure that the side agreement that, the, that Canada has executed with the United States would create all the same protections for the export of plastic products from Canada to the United States as would be the case if the United States had ratified the Basel Convention. We are not able to say that today. There is more to be done such that this isn't a loophole. And while on the subject of plastic waste, I think we need to expand beyond single-use plastics to look at polystyrene. Many uses in marine contexts, wharves and buoys break down very quickly. And these little bits of styrofoam, polystyrene, in our waters, in our beaches, are a real threat to marine life, but don't cat are not categorized as necessarily single-use products. They're more durable, but they break down, and they are really a threat. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm pleased to address the question by the Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Uh, Canada played a leadership role in the negotiation of the Basel Amendments on plastic waste during the conference of the parties to the Basel Convention and supported their adoption. Canada considers these amendments as very important as they are key to strengthening controls on exports of certain plastic waste, leading to cleaner trade of plastic waste globally and contributing to a redu reduction of marine litter. I'm very pleased to inform the House that uh, Canada accepted the amendments on December 29th, 2020. As a result, since January 1st, 2021, Canadian exporters must obtain export permits to be able to export these plastic waste to parties to the Convention. The consent of the importing country is required before an export permit will be issued. 
All parties to the convention have now accepted these important amendments except for Turkey. This means that a global framework for controlling the transboundary movement of these plastic wastes is now in place. This represents an important safeguard to allow parties to deny the import of plastic waste subject to the convention, including prohibiting imports from non-parties. The fact that Basel Convention states that parties to the convention wanting to trade waste subject to the convention with, with a non-party must enter into an agreement with that country, which is, non, uh, which is a non-legally binding instrument, or can enter into an agreement which is a legally binding instrument. Both non-legally binding and binding instruments can satisfy the requirements of the convention. Such instruments must respect the obligations of the convention. The traded waste will be managed in an environmentally sound manner. Um, as you know, Madam Speaker, the U.S. is not a party to the Basel Convention. Basel parties around the world can allow imports of plastic waste covered by the convention from the U.S. only if they have entered into an arrangement or agreement with the U.S., as required by the convention. Since Canada trades plastic waste with the United States and in accordance with its obligation under Basel, Canada concluded an arrangement with the United States for the environmentally sound management of non-hazardous waste traded between the two countries. The arrangement applies between only Canada and the United States. Plastic waste covered by the Basel Convention and destined to a party to the convention is subject to Canadian regulation and requires an export permit, which will only be granted if the importing party consents to the import. This is the case even if the waste ships through the United States. There is no free pass for exports of controlled plastic waste from Canada to Basel parties when going through the United States. Securing a commitment that non-hazardous waste traded between Canada and the U.S is and will continue to be managed in an environmentally sound manner, as is at the heart of this arrangement. This arrangement is based upon the legislative and other measures in place by the countries and as such is consistent with the Basel Convention provisions and allows trade to continue freely between our countries. There is significant environmental gains in allowing uh, plastic waste to move freely across the Canada-US border. These include access to feedstock for recycling operations in Canada, recycling in the U.S. of plastic waste that would otherwise be landfilled in Canada, and reduce in, uh, reduced incentives to export overseas. Canada's ratification of the Basel Plastic Waste Amendments, along with the arrangement with the United States, means that vulnerable countries can refuse to accept Canadian exports of plastic waste. It also fosters enhanced recycling in Canada reduces plastic and reduces plastic waste that can be sent to a landfill site in Canada. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Member for Sandwich Gold Islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I'm sure the Parliamentary Secretary will not be surprised if I will continue to maintain that Canada has not taken every step we need to take and are capable of taking under the Basel Convention in order to ensure that the trade bilaterally with the United States is not just fully compliant with Basel, but goes beyond it to ensure that there are no loopholes for Canada's plastic waste, especially that, that could be considered hazardous, from being exported to non-OECD countries. But I do want to make a more general statement. The, the notion that plastic can be recycled is largely um, dubious. A lot of Canadians separate their waste and want to see it recycled. And in the case of glass and aluminum and paper and paper products, it largely is of value and is recycled. But plastic materials degrade very quickly. There's very limited access to actual recycling. We need to take control of the matter and make sure we move off. The, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Canada is committed to ensuring that exports of plastic waste navigations. That's why we've accepted and implemented the Basel Convention amendments on plastic waste. Canada and the U.S. have measures in place for the environmentally sound me uh, management of, the of that waste. We are leveraging the mechanism available under the Basel Convention to continue to trade with the U.S. The arrangement between Canada and the U.S. does not override regulatory obligations on Canadian exporters. Any waste covered by the Convention shipped from Canada to a party to the Basel Convention is subject to our regulation and requires prior consent. Our government is acting responsibly by ensuring that countries consent to imports while fostering uh, recycling and reducing plastic waste landfilling. Thank you, Madam Speaker.